Thanks for the support as a channel member, Chris Graves. Well, after the events of yesterday's episode, which if you, hasn't, if you haven't seen, you should go and watch that one first, definitely. But after that, it's looking a little bit harder for us to go up as champions this year. It's going to take a miracle, but I have seen miracles happen in this game before. So we're going to cross our fingers throughout the entire episode. We're going to leave thumbs ups. If we get to a thousand likes on the video before the matches are played, then we've got a chance. I'll blame you if we don't get to a thousand likes and we don't get promoted. The other priority, of course, is to just try and make sure that we at least get a decent seeded position for the playoffs if we don't manage to if we don't manage to go up as champions. We've got to win both games. If we do that, it's in the hands of the football manager gods. <laughs> Hello and welcome to part 46 of Born Again. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have the final two games of the regular league season. We're at home against Brackley and at home against Morecambe. Win them both and there is a chance we could go up automatically. But as you can see, we have a five-game gap between... A five-game? A five-point gap between us and local rivals Boston at the top of the league. It's looking pretty unlikely. So the other priority is to make sure we finish in this top three so we get preferential treatment in the playoffs. It gets us a home game in the semi-final. No need for a quarter-final. It's all good stuff. But of course, Morecambe in particular are very much in that mix as well and we'll want to spoil our fun. Because they're spoil sports. So, Brackley up first. This is the team that's going to face Brackley. It's not quite a first choice team because of things what happened. Bedwell is suspended. Sati still injured after picking up a knock in that last game. Um, so, we're going with Anang in goal. A back four of Mark Sheffield, Dootson, Dorset and Shaw Sainsbury. Bradshaw, Broadbent, Mundell and Radoni in midfield. I know you've not seen much of Radoni. He's only played three times this year. Um, but he is a, <laughs> he's a central midfielder, but also officially the second best uh, right winger we've got at the club. Um, I guess we, the, the other option uh, would have been Harmon, but he's just recovering from injury himself. As you can see, he's not fit enough to play. So Radoni, Radoni is going to get a rare appearance for us. And then, of course, Quinn and Bond up front let's get into the game let's cross everything like i said before we need likes if you haven't liked the video yet now would be a good time to like the video because liking the video if we get to those a thousand likes we're guaranteed to go up as champions i think that's how it works pick up where you left off in the last game which of course was in the last episode against south shields and we were very good much better than we were in the in the first match in the last episode, which if that had gone differently, this would be a whole different story going into these last couple of games. Um, everyone is playing. Oh, in fact, Boston aren't playing. Boston and their pesky games in hand. What is it with them? So Port Vale are playing. I'm not sure who they're playing. We'll have a look at that in a second. And then between this and the final day of the season, Boston play, knowing that they just have to win to win the league. And they can, so that it could all happen between these two matches. I guess at least that means no one's winning the league today. Um, Bond is going to take a penalty here after Radoni is fouled. There you go. Does that count as an assist for Radoni? And a rare appearance, of course, assuming Bond scores, which now I've assumed it, he guaranteed not to. Uh, Bond with the penalty. He does score. And we're 1 0 up after 15 minutes. And that, I mean, even that's not enough to put us top of the league, but it does, it does apply a little bit of pressure to Boston. Hopefully, hopefully, up to second. What are Port Vale doing? Port Vale are away from home against Harrogate. Harrogate are, where are they? Down in mid-table. So you would expect Port Vale to win that game, but Port Vale are off, sort of fresh off of a thrashing from Boston, a 3-0 home defeat against Boston in their last game. And as you can see, as of right now, Dulwich Hamlet have actually jumped up above Port Vale. Does that mean... Does that mean Dulwich have gone ahead in their game? Of course, Tycoon Tycoon Central at Dulwich Hamlet. They've got all the money um, and will be... I mean, they're the ones who ruined the playoffs for us last year. So if we can avoid them in the playoffs, that would be useful. Uh, Bradshaw plays it out to Mark Sheffield. Cross comes in. Bond is there again and hits the crossbar. Um, I don't know if Port Vale are behind. No, they're not. So Dulwich Hamlet ahead against Solihull Moors. And... It's frustrating. Boston should be made to play now. I can only hope Boston are away against either Morecambe or Orient because there's a chance that these teams who are still pushing for playoffs could grab results there. Harrogate have just gone one 0 up against Port Vale, which is a massive, massive score for a massive score, a massive goal for the uh, for the promotion running because it kind of 
puts Port Vale out of it. In fact, it not, not even kind of. If that game ends 1-0 to Harrogate, Port Vale cannot win the league anymore. They, they will officially be out of it. Uh, Broadbent plays it to Bond. Bond with the cross to Bradshaw, who's there, and heads just a little too high and a little too wide. Uh, but at least, at least we're still winning. Mundell, back in the team after a long time out today, um, has been making a lot of mistakes. Um, don't get complacent. Keep doing what you're doing. All that good stuff. We know what a good team talk looks like. It's usually the opposite of what I pick. Oh, older shot have now moved up above Morecambe and Orient because they're beating Hartlepool away from home. That then gives both Morecambe and Orient more of an incentive. Not ideal because we play Morecambe on the last day of the season, but I just hope that one of those two is the team that's facing Boston. Solihull Moors have just equalised against Dulwich Hamlet, which, again, if it finishes like that, Dulwich Hamlet are out of it. It will just be between us and Boston going into that last game, unless, of course, Boston win in between, but we're going to pretend that's not happening. At the moment, we're living in a universe where Boston lose their next game because that's a nice universe to live in. I enjoy being there. Broadbent plays the ball forward. Quinn with a lovely flick on Bond is there. Bond's offside. I think that's a tight decision. Do we get a little bit of a replay to have a look at that? Because I don't, I don't think that was. Quinn with the flick on. Oh, he's miles offside. I mean, what's he even thinking there? What's his, what's his game plan in that situation? What an idiot. I told you he wasn't, the, admittedly, in the last episode. Uh, but I told you Bond wasn't the same player this year. What's happened here? Oh, an offside. That's all right. I just saw Anang drop the ball in his penalty area and just assumed, oh, it wasn't from long range, so I'll give them a way to score a different way. Right. What are we going to do to change the game a little bit? Sheedy, we don't need to change the game. We're winning. We're going to bring Sheedy on because we all know I'm having a little bit of a love affair with Mark Sheedy. He's a wonderful man. Uh, Broadbent is on a yellow card, but Bradshaw is tiring. And Bradshaw, remember at the end of the last episode, Bradshaw was asking for some time off. He's tired. So we need to protect him a little bit because we'll need him for the playoffs. Rodoni with the with the free kick, not the free kick, the corner. Um, it doesn't lead to anything other than our two centre-backs knocking the ball back and forth between them as they retreat back into their own half. The silly gooses. Mark Sheffield plays it forward to Mitchell, who's not had much game time this year. Plays it back to Broadbent. Broadbent looking to pick out Rodoni and does, who in turn tries to find Mundell, but Mundell doesn't get hold of it and Dorset intercepts nicely at the back. Broadbent plays Mitchell in. Mitchell's in a good position here. He's got a second opportunity at it as well. And there was an open goal there temporarily, but nobody there to hit it. But that is a cross and a half from Mark Schaffel. And once again, Matthew Bond is offside. What is that man's plan? What is he trying to achieve? How far off was he this time? Okay, that one's touch and go. I'm not going to criticise him too much there. And not, at non-league level, you could see that given and nobody's going to complain apart from Brackley, probably, and Boston, if we end up sneaking past them to pit them to the title. Um, but, of course, if we concede a goal here, that isn't going to happen. And I guess I should probably drop back to a more balanced tactic. I've left it too late, and Anang saved that with something. I don't know what something it was, but we have now dropped back to a balanced mentality. We don't want to go too gung-ho, and I imagine this is where the goal goes in and we all cry. Um, lovely interception from Dorset. Get the ball clear, somebody. Uh, we've got... We've got changes to make. Um, Dootson is on a yellow card and not playing well, so we're going to bring Taylor Jones on for him to play at centre-back alongside Dorset. We're going to, I don't even know what to say, concentrate. Why are Brackley really pushing for a goal? They have nothing. Okay, they do have something to play for. They're in a relegation battle. Holy smokes. They're going to keep trying until the end. That is uncalled for. Bond receives it nicely from Anang. Trying to play it into Sheedy. He succeeds. Back to Bond. Broadbent now. Can't find Mitchell. And now it's another opportunity for Brackley to counter. And they're just first to everything at the moment. Jones nods down to Broadbent, who has time to look up. Finds Mundell. Mundell playing Mitchell in. We've got two players in the middle. Cross comes in. It misses both of them. What is happening? Because now we've got another counter-attack from Brackley. This is not the way for a title race to end. Dorset with a lovely tackle, but they get the ball back immediately. Anang, what is that man for? Oh! I might sack him. Oh! And that is how we didn't win the league this year. That's disgusting. <sighs> Demand more. I can't remember where the buttons are. 
I'm furious with Anang. Can we sack him now, mid-game? Disgusted with him. Utterly disgusted with him. Oh, Bond. To Mundo. Plays it forward to Rodoni. If we score again here, there's still hope. Sheedy can't quite get there. Mundo. Mundo from range. Bond. Disallowed again. He's had three goals disallowed in this game. There is a conspiracy going on here. Oh, that's dirty, disgusting, horrible. What have we got to do? Stay on side. It's simple. That's what we've got to do. Shaw Sainsbury to Rodoni again. Bond. Back out to Shaw Sainsbury. Everyone's charging forward. Broadbent has time to pick a pass. Finds Bond, who is onside. Matthew Bond cannot find a way to get past the goalkeeper. But we have a corner and there are still a couple of minutes left. Just give it everything you've got, lads. Rodoni with the corner. Come on now. Make it a good one. Corner comes in and doesn't beat the first defender. That's not my definition of a good one. Maybe I need to write these things down for the players so they understand what I'm asking for when we get into these situations. Do something. Give me a goose darn highlight. Oh, that's a, really upset me. That whole thing that we've just witnessed really upset me. Boston have won the league and it's because we handed it to them. And what's made it worse, Samik Pal won't let me sack Anang. Well... Well, well. And look at this as well. Going into this final game of the season, that is the difference between a home game and an away game in the playoffs. It's the difference between avoiding Dulwich Hamlet, who always beat us now, and playing Dulwich Hamlet. This last game is still important, just not as important as it was before. And this makes it even more sickening. Boston lost at home to Telford in the next game. If it hadn't been for Anang, we'd be going into this final game of the season still with a chance of winning the league. Small handful of changes for the Morecambe game then. Obviously, we've dropped Anang, never to be seen again. Horlock comes in to, I think, probably make his debut. Um, which, it's, I mean, bearing in mind how bad Anang's been. We've had this guy here all year. He's, apparently, his last game was at left back. Seriously? His last game was at left back. Who for? <laughs> so he played at left back against the Bourne youth candidates. He must be, he must think he's never been further away from the first team as a goalkeeper than when he played left back against a bunch of youth candidates. Um, but he is in the team today playing in goal. Bedwell also comes back in for Dootson who drops down to the bench and Harmon comes in on the right hand side as well. Now he's fit enough to play. We've dropped back down to a standard mentality because... I'm afraid of Morecambe, very afraid of them. They're a team that we might have to play in these playoffs. They're a team that, as you can see, have beaten us the most recent time we've played. And I feel like we're gonna, we've, had, we've just had the stuffing knocked out of this, whereas they're thinking they could potentially have a bit of a turnaround here. That being said, a minute gone, Bedwell, back in the team today after his suspension, has put us 1-0 up which is a lovely situation to be in because if we finish second in the league, yes, it's it's hard finishing second because you think, oh, if only, there's a couple of if only results we've had all year that we could have won the league today. Bedwell was almost grabbing a second of the game there. But it does put us in the strongest position going into those playoffs. It means we're at, we don't have to play in the quarterfinal at all. We then play at home in the semifinal. I think at this level, the final is on a neutral venue. I think it's at Wembley. Um, but if it works the same way it does the league below, the, the final would then be at the home team's ground as well. So we could potentially have two playoff games, both here at the Abbey Lawn. And then we've got a, we'd, we'd feel very confident in that because I imagine if you are one of these teams that are used to playing in the league, which the majority of the teams in this playoff are going to be, this is a weird ground to come to. Horlock's no better than Anang then, is he? Oh my word, Anang's going to be back in for the playoffs. We've got Quigley still knocking around the club as well. I've signed so many goalkeepers and this is how they repay me. Oh. oh, yellow gloves. Who wears yellow gloves on their debut? 
Especially if you're going to do that. Talk about drawing attention to yourself, you numbskull. This is going to be his one and only appearance for the club. He can go back to playing left-back after this. I'm glad we weren't allowed to sack Anang. Mick Powell knew. He knew there was no one better at the club. And it's got to be a priority for this summer. I know I get laughed at every summer for signing goalkeepers. But this year, we might actually have to find one who's played in goal before and knows, and knows how to do goalkeeping stuff. Goodness me. Right. Bond wins the ball back there. Their keeper's well out of position. And Matthew Bond gets his 23rd goal of the season. I think that now puts him two goals away from being Bourne's all-time record goal scorer. I think the record is 54. I think that puts him to 52. So he, uh, that I mean, that's some, imagine getting that record at Wembley in the playoff final. That would be lovely. Obviously, we'd like him to get it a little bit sooner because that means we'll have been much more likely to make it that far. But, Either way, he, he should have that wrapped up this year. Now, if we're going up, Matthew Bond's ending this season as all-time top scorer. I think the two probably go hand in hand. Port Vale have just gone ahead away against Sutton, so they're keeping the pressure on us, whilst also making it that bit harder for us to make sure we separate from Dulwich Hamlet for as long as possible, which is our big goal. Um, we don't want to have to face them because they, they support our fun last year, the mean old bullies. Um, right, let's... Uh, Let's have a look at what these other games are. Who are Dulwich Hamlet playing? We need to we need to investigate that situation. Harris Harmon, sorry, has won the ball back there, but then given it straight back again. Bedwell heads clear, but only as far as Bradshaw. But Broadbent, who has been looking better and better as this season gone on, he's very composed in midfield there. Plays it forward to Bond, who finds Mundell out to Bradshaw. Quinn is in the middle, as is Bond. Quinn's there though, and there's goal twenty six of the season for Jacob Quinn. Another assist for Bradshaw, who has been excellent this year. And we're two nil, two sorry, three one, not two nil. Um, we're three one up, still in the first half. And let's see who Dulwich Hamlet are playing. They are, they are. Who are they playing? They're away against Billericay, and I don't know where Billericay are in the league, but I know they're not in a promotion race. So Dulwich Hamlet will be a little bit disappointed not to be ahead in their game yet. In fact, to be losing in their game. Billericay are trying to save themselves from relegation. A win for them keeps them in the division. So I guess they've got... More, oh, there you go. Dulwich Hamlet have equalised. But they've... I would say Bill Ricky probably have more of an incentive in that game than Dulwich Hamlet have. They're already in the playoffs. It doesn't really matter where in the playoffs they finish. Mundell's done brilliantly here. This is fantastic from Mundell. If only he could have applied the finish, we'd be home and dry. Second place finish. And looking, looking confident going into the playoffs. I won't say comfortable, because the playoffs can still be a nightmare. But... I'm starting to feel a little bit better after what's gone on today. Boston drawing at home to Northampton. That's your really sickening thing. If we'd have won that last game, we'd be at top of the league right now with 20 minutes to go. Because Boston, once again, bottling it. But it does, I don't think it counts as bottling it after they've already won the league, does it? <sighs> they do strike me as a team that's likely to come straight back down again, though. But like I say, it's best for Lincolnshire if we both go up. And Boston were never winning the playoffs. They've been far too inconsistent. Whereas a couple of dodgy results aside, we've been we've been pretty good for a couple of months now. We were well out of this. Just after Christmas, we were talking about maybe not even making it into the playoffs. And we were so far behind Boston. So for us to be this close to them at this stage shows just how well we've done in this last couple of months of the season so we are one of the form teams in the division going into the playoffs and we've got a we've got to feel fairly confident for once going into a playoff where if it all finishes as it is our semi-final is going to be against either Dulwich Hamler or Morecambe so we do have the potential for a replay of what happened this time last year when I think last year we got Dulwich Hamlet in the quarterfinal so we've got a little bit better but we really don't want to play them again. I'd like to see them score, jump up above Port Vale. In fact, it won't even put them above Port Vale, will it? We need Port Vale to concede as well. Um, but it looks like... Or, I guess, Morecambe, who we're playing now, do us a favour, beat Dulwich Hamlet. We then play Morecambe at home again in the semi-final, beat them again, and we're at Wembley. So Morecambe just have to have a little victory in their defeat against Bourne sandwich. Well, it's a, it would be a victory sandwich because you describe the filling rather than the bread when you're talking about sandwiches. As we all know, you don't say, oh, I'm just going to go and get myself a bread sandwich. Might have some cheese in my bread sandwich. No, it's a cheese sandwich. Everyone knows you've got bread. 
right, um, I don't want him to wave his claws. I don't want to upset him. I don't care if we've not got any money. So Mick Powell can have that conversation with him if need be. But we have finished second. It is going to be Dulwich Hamlet or Morecambe in the playoff semi-final, which will be on tomorrow's video. And hopefully we don't mess it up this time. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.